So here I have a small set of data in two columns and six rows and I want to convert these columns into rows. So first of all, I'll select two rows and six columns because I want to flip this data. And after that, I will use the transpose function and select the range that I want to convert. And I'll close the parenthesis. And after that, I will press and hold control and shift key and I will hit enter. Now, the moment I hit enter, it actually converts these two columns into two rows and six columns. And I can also convert this uh, transpose data back into two columns and six rows. Again, I will select the equivalent range and I will enter the transpose function. Select the range, close the function and again press control, press and hold control and shift keys and hit enter. So here I have a date in the cell A1 and I want to get the first date of the same month. So what I will do, I'll refer to the date, the original date and I will minus the day number from this date. So I'll use the day function. So this is basically subtracting 16 days from the original date. So when I do that, it gives me 31st of December. So that is the last date of the previous month. And now I will add one into this date. And this gives me 1st January 2022. And there's one more way to do that. I'll use EO month function and refer to the date again, the original date, and I will use minus one in the months. So this will give me the last date of the previous month. And again, I will add one into it. That. All right. So here I have a list of numbers in the column A and I want to get the sum of filtered cells. So what I want here, I want to have a formula that can change the sum value according to the filter I apply. So I, for this, I'll use the subtotal function and I will specify nine because I want the sum. And after that, I will refer to the range where I have values. So that is the A2 to A1001. And now the moment I hit enter, it gives me the total of all the values that I have in the range. But the moment I apply a filter, it gives me the sum of only visible cells, the cells which are filtered right now. All right. So here I have two different text values in cell A1 and A2, and I want to combine these two values in the cell B1. But I want to also add a line break within the formula. So for this, what I'll do, I'll specify to the first value and after that i will use ampersand sign and i will use a specific function that is called char c h a r that basically you know equals to the character if i want to add a character and in the char function i will specify 10 as a number and again i'll use ampersand and refer to the second value now the moment i hit enter it gives me both of these values in the same cell, but using a line break. But there's one thing that you need to uh, note down that your cell must have the wrap text, you know, activated. You must apply the wrap text to the cell to get this value with a line break. So here I have a list of dates and I want to get the last date of each month. So if here I have 1st January, so I want to get 31st January for this date. So for this, I'll use a specific function that is called EO month. And when I enter EO month, it allows me to get the last date of future months or some previous months, or even I can get the last date of the current month. So I'll specify the date for which I want to get the last date. And in the second argument which is months i will specify zero so it tells excel to get the last date for the month for which i actually specified the date so for the same month of the specified date and the moment i hit enter it gives me 31st january 2022 and if i drag this formula down it gives me the last date of each of the months that i have here in the dates
So here I have two dates in the cell A1 and A2 and I want to create a range of these two dates. So I want to combine these two dates in a single cell. So if I try to combine them in a normal way using a ampersand. So it shows me the serial number behind those dates. So for this what I'll do, I'll use the text function and specify the first date and after that I'll specify the format as well. And then I'll use ampersand and use a small hyphen and after that again I'll use the text function and specify the second date and then the format that I want to give to that date. And the moment I hit enter, it gives me a range of two dates using the first date at the starting and then the second date. All right, so here I have the date of birth and today's date. And now I want to calculate the age from these two dates. So for this, I'll use the date diff function, which is a hidden function, which is not in the Excel functions list, but you can still use it. So when I enter date, diff excel will not show me the arguments that i need to define but i'll tell you that the first argument is the start date so the start date will be the date of birth so i'll refer to it and the second date will be the today's date and after that i need to specify the unit in the third argument so first thing i want to know is the years between these two dates so that that will be the year of age so I'll specify Y to get the year. So the completed years between these two dates, uh, between date of birth and today's date is 31. And if I want to get the rest of the months, so if someone is 31 years and five months old, so I want to get those five months here. So again, I'll use the same function. Uh, let me copy it from here and i'll enter it here and now i'll change the unit here so i'll use ym to get the above months so the moment i hit enter it says seven so that person is 31 years and seven months old now apart from years and months there are few days and i want to get those days as well so again i'll enter the the function and here I will use the unit as MD so it will give me the rest of the days after years and months so the moment I hit enter it says 24 so the actual age of this person is 31 years 7 months and 24 days so here I have two columns name and age and I want to count the number of people who have age between 10 and 25 so for this I'll use the countifs function and I'll specify the age column as a criteria range and first of all I'll specify the lower range of the criteria so I'll create a range between 10 and 25 so for this here I will use greater than and equals to 10 and now again I'll specify one more criteria and select the same age column and here I will create a criteria for 25 so lower than or equals to 25 and now the moment i hit enter it returns seven that means there are seven people in this you know list of names and age who have age between 25 or so that means we have seven people in this list of names and age who have age between 10 and 25 so in the column a i have a list of numbers and i want to count numbers which are below 45 or equals to 45 so for this what i'll do i'll use the count if function and i will specify the range that is the column a 
and after that i will specify the criteria so i'll use double quotation marks and i'll use the lower than sign and then equals as well if you want to you know also include numbers which are equals to 45 if you don't want to do that you just need to use the lower than sign and now i will specify the number that is 45 and and closed it with a double quotation marks enter closing bracket and then hit enter so it shows 50 in the result that means there are 50 numbers the count is 50 where numbers are lower than 45 or equals to 45 and you can also specify this number which is you know you want to input in the criteria you can also specify this number from a cell so what i'll do i'll remove the number from here and instead of specifying it inside the function i will specify a cell and now i will hit enter now the moment i specify number in this cell for example if i specify 35 so it will show me the numbers the count of numbers which are below 35 or equals to 35 so this is a simple formula that you can use to count numbers which are less than a particular number so here i have few values in the column a and i want to check if a particular value is in this list of values or not so for this i'll use two different functions that is if and count if so i'll use if first and if and if i need to specify the logical test and for this i'll use count if further I refer to the range and now i will specify the value that i want to look up for so this value is and now i'll close the count if function and here i will specify a logic test that i want to uh, you know perform to get the result if this value is there in the list or not so i'll use this greater than and zero and now i will use yes if value is true and no if value is not there so the moment i hit enter it returns yes because that value is there so if you see the result that count if actually returns it says one because the count of that value in this list is one and that proves that the value is there and after that if function gives me yes because the condition is true now let's take a different situation where i need to check a partial value i want to check if that value is there in the list but i want to look up for a partial value so if i again go with this word glenn this is a first name i need to use the same formula using if and count if but i need to use it in a different way so what i'll do i'll use if and then again i will use count if and i will specify the range now here i need to specify the criteria but i will use wildcard characters with the value as a criteria so first of all i'll enter double quotation marks and then i'll use asterisk and again i'll use ampersand and the value that i want to check and now again i'll use a asterisk sign so it will not consider value which is before and value which is after it will only consider these the these characters that value which i have inside this and now i'll close the count if function but again here i will use the greater than and zero and now my values yes and no now the moment i hit enter it says yes because the value glenn is there in the cell a2 